Welcome back Quadrature fans, my name is Mary and Elena and today we're going to tackle math notation for quadrature, a very important topic. Um, we've kind of been doing that all along, so let's get to it. I've got math notation for quadrature. Now let's draw our basic box and inside we're going to have some kind of a curve like this and there's a point key which uh, we can call x x to the n this is our x-axis, y equals x to the n. This is a family of special curves called ordinary curves. y equals x squared, x third, x fourth. Um, in Latin you would say curvaum ordinarium. Another way to say it is curvaum vulgarum, okay? <laughs> It sounds vulgar, but vulgar in Latin means common. And I guess the masses were kind of vulgar, and that's the common. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Um, so here we have zero, zero. Oh, let's see. And uh, let's just. Uh, just draw our basic setup. So here we have a point that's anywhere along this locus, along this function. The plot of that is x, x to the n. So a particular point might be a, and then this would be a to the n. And of course, don't forget my characteristic diagonal, because we're going to look at areas and slopes and area ratios and slopes we already know we, for example we already know we proved last time that k sub n our area factor for n equals 1 over n plus 1 okay and c sub n equals n we proved that last time using a uh, I thought it was a really nice way to derive it. There's a lot of similarity between the, the way the areas and the slopes work. So here's our basic setup. You know, this is this looks like a parametric equation, not equation, the setup. There's x, x to the n. And this, this, this is a point anywhere along this line. And in our system, we're always starting at zero, so quadrature doesn't work for anything else. It always starts at zero. Now we'll handle the case where, you know, we're going from A to B, but for us, our world, everything starts at zero. So here's our basic setup. And so what have we said? We've said area equals well k sub n times this box and that's this particular box wherever you are on this line whatever point you choose if you choose this one that forms a box and you just take that box and multiply it by k sub n and you get this little wedge underneath right there that's that's the area of this particular wedge from 0 to not base a i've used this in my last video it's kind of a high level block notation and okay in software you use blocks, black boxes, 
uh, UML diagrams. The, you, you, it's an abstraction. You don't put. You don't want to clutter your drawing. You just say, okay, it's the box times some ratio. Similarly, for slope, slope equals c sub n times. Now, guess what? It's the diagonal. The characteristics diagonal. So, for example, for y equals x squared, well, the tangent right here, the tangent slope, would be 2 times this diagonal. That's, that's what we're saying. And similarly, um, the area would be, for y equals x squared, it would be one-third of this box. Pretty simple, huh? And we got that using just algebraic methods, using and relying on the invariant. That's what's playing. Invariant is playing first fiddle, not the limit. Limit it may be in the background, and it is, but it's 1640, and we don't have much of a notion or definition of the limit. Uh, it just wasn't around. I mean, it was, you look at it historically, I mean, even 2,000 years ago, Archimedes had it. He called it the uh, method of exhaustion. But if you ask, well, what do you mean by exhaustion? Do, do you get exhausted? you stay up until 2 o'clock in the morning trying to do this thing? Is that the definition of exhaustion? <laughs> uh, well, let's fast forward to 1640, Cavalieri of this the way he, let's say, you slice something up, uh, he called these indivisibles. What's an indivisible? I mean, it's so small that it's indivisible. What does that mean? You know, it's a very vague definition in 1640. And so this this has been a problem for ages, the definition of the limit. Anyways, um, we're relying on the invariant. And, of course, I'm not saying that the limit doesn't exist. I personally believe that, yeah, it, it exists. Uh, Wahlberger's five properties of areas, how would you set them up? Without a limiting process, I have no idea. I, I couldn't do it. I mean, I tried, and all I can say is it took me a long time, and I couldn't do it. So I'm just a software engineer. I don't worry about these things. They're above my head anyways. Um, but I understand the uh, invariant, and uh, that's what I rely on, and that's what I teach. And that's our 1640 AV approach. So, all right. So area is k sub n times the box, and this is the box. So wherever you are along here, point P, that could be anywhere along here. <clears throat> Multiply by k sub n, which we already know, and you've got it. So not only the slope, take, uh, find this characteristic diagonal, multiply by c sub n, you got it. Well, let's carry this further. Um, we want to be a little more precise than this vague notion or box, you know. Let's, uh, let's sharpen it up. Um, we're going to call this S. S of x to the n. And I'm using S. What is S? Well, it actually stands for signed area. And I'm using a term that Professor Wahlberger uses. And so I'm kind of steering in his direction. This is S. And S is essentially a box operator. I don't even think of it as a function, but rather an operator that takes a function, transforms it somehow, and returns a function, another function, the area function. So in other words, for the area, we take whatever we have, if you're at x, 
you got x to the n. Now you got height times base, that's your area. Multiply it by k to the n, that's your new area. That's what s of x to the n means. It's an operator. Think of it purely that way. We're just doing an operation on a given function. And our functions are limited to curvum ordinarium or curvum vulgarum, okay? The x, x squared, x third, that's it. Nothing, nothing else at this point. Simple ordinary curves or functions, but very important ones. So s, which kind of looks like the integral, hmm, wonder why Professor Wahlberger chose s, well, <laughs> but it does represent what's called signed area, and we'll see the thinking behind it. Um, if you really want a better theoretical background, well, go to his videos, he's got a ton of them on this subject, the subject of sign area. The idea that you can have positive area or negative area sounds strange at first. Does that make sense? Positive, negative area? No. Oh. Signed area. Very important concept. S, that's all it is. It's an operator. It takes x to the n. That's our function. Very specialized curve. x to the n. We're not doing anything else. Well, what is that? Well, let's crank it a little further. Equals, and we've already done this. This is nothing new. It's just k to the n times x to the n, our original function, times x. That's it. This is your input function. You take this. Here's x to the n. Multiply by x. Multiply by k sub n, which we already know, and return that. That's what the S stands for. Don't think of it as anything else. We've been doing this all along. There's x to the n. So multiply x to the n times x, height times base, times k to the n. That gives you this area here. That's all it is. Well... You could think of it as a box operation, and it's actually good to do that. See that box? It, it literally looks like a box. You know, you got height times base. And the nice thing about this notation, and I'm a great fan of Leibniz notation. Um, unfortunately, we can't do Leibniz notation at this point because that involves a limiting process, heavy duty. So our notation is not 1640, nah. But look at this. Let's say that x to the n was, you know, we said kilowatts. That's our units. And hours is our x. In other words, you're, you're burning electricity, something like this. Let's say it's y equals x squared, right? And so this is in kilowatts, units. And then this time is in hours. So what are the units that you know you you burn? Well, obviously it's kilowatt hours. That's and guess what? At the end of a month you get a bill from the electric company, and they charge how many kilowatt hours did you use? And it may be I don't know ten cents or whatever. Maybe it was, maybe it's more twenty cents per kilowatt hour, whatever rate. So it, it uh, translates to money, and you could ask, well, you know, is this energy that I've generated, or is this generated energy that I used? And that's a difference of sign. So sign area is important here, right? Okay. And that even translates to positive money or negative money in terms of your account status. Very important. Okay, I like this. It has the units kind of built in. And it's good to think of it this way. Of course, um, 
We could also take it one step further and it's k to the m times x to the m plus 1. What we're saying here is that, look, we've raised this function by 1 and multiplied by k sub m. That's it. That's our operation. S is an operator on a function and it does this. That's how it operates on that function. It takes the original, raises it by one power, slaps k to the end, returns it to you. Boom, that's it. Um, so great. Okay, slope. Similar line of thinking. Except we are going to use, instead of s, we're going to use d. Hmm, just the letter d. And that again conforms, I think, to the Wahlberger notation. I mean, why create something else? S and D. And that's actually kind of looking like the integral and derivative, isn't it, in calculus? Hmm, interesting happenstance. Okay, but it's just D. D is an operator. Don't think of it as anything else but an operator in our little world, okay? D of x to the n. Well, what is that? Well, well that's our box operation, right? That's our... You take c sub n times x to the n, and instead of multiplying by x, you do a divide by x, and you're done. Return it. And actually think of it literally that way. See that diagonal right there? Wow. And again, I like this because it gives you the sense of units. Let's suppose that our units were x to the n represented volts and x represented meters. So what would you have? You would have units of uh, volts per meter, right? Well, that means something. That's electric field strength in physics. Or electricity, right? That, that units is important. And you kind of lose that sense if you'll go directly to, you know, c sub n, x to the n minus 1, which is what, that's what that means. You lower it by 1 degree. But you, you've lost that sense of units. With this, you have the sense of units. And as I said, I, I, I like the Leibniz notation because that encapsulates the sense of units. But I just can't use it at this time. What is Leibniz notation? Well, for area, we would have a funny looking squiggle like this. x to the n dx. Kind of looks similar, doesn't it? Okay. Except the problem in 1640 is what's the significance of this dx? That's not a simple thing, okay? Don't, don't ever think that this thing's simple. This is, there's a lot. Right here is a limit. This is an encapsulation of a limit. Similar, dy, dx. That, the d encapsulates the notion of limit, and we're not ready for that, not yet. But, it does carry... The units, and I said I like this notation because you get kilowatt hours right here, or you get volts per meter right here. A great thing as an engineer, I love it. So, love that notation. The German guy Leibniz got it right. <laughs> All right, so, but uh, scratch that for now. At 1640, we cannot use that. Oh, too bad. But we'll get there eventually. We're going. Okay, um, so again, reiterating, what do we have? S, and that's just the letter S, and D 
our box. Open up doors. Box operators. This. That's it. Operators. Operators operate. What's I like to think of it as an operator rather than as a function itself. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I'd, I'd like some feedback on this. I don't know what you guys think. But to me, at least I'm defining it right now. And I have the luxury of doing so. It's after all, I'm doing quadrature. This is not an integral, right? Or derivative in calculus, because we're not doing calculus. <laughs> so I define that as a simple operation x to the n times x times kn or x to the n raise one power you got it return it d of x to the n is x to the n divided by x times c to the n you're lowering by one degree times c to the n which is n and you're done okay uh, now let's Let's try to uh, develop some notation. What if I want to evaluate uh, this area, the signed area, at a particular value, x equals a, let's say. Uh, a could equal 2 or 3, whatever. And here's how we would set that up. You say s of x to the n, and you put a bar, and you say x equals a. And we're evaluating the signed area at x equals a. Now you might say, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't kind of match up with calculus. Because don't you have to have two? Very, well, in our world, everything starts at zero, so this is a definite region, and it always starts from zero, okay? That's our world. Uh, what I've been doing for all these, what is it, eight or nine lectures, everything starts at zero. If it doesn't start at zero, you can't do it. You have to break it up into little functions, just like I did the t, and those little functions do start at zero, okay? So everything in our world starts at zero. So that's from zero to a. And that's all we're saying is evaluate x to the n at x equals a, something like x equals 2. Sometimes you can just forget x equal, you just say a, that's also valid, okay? So, mm, let's see. Um, so, I don't know, if we had, uh, well, what would sine area of x squared at uh, a equals, so that equals well, that's pretty easy. It's raise it by one power in case of n. So it's uh, x to the uh, 2 plus 1 times 1 third. So equals x to the third over 3 evaluated at x equals a, right? So that equals a to the third over 3, and if, let's say if a equals 2, what would that be? Well, that equals uh, 2 to the third over the 8 thirds. So that would be your area for this when you evaluated it, a and a equals 2. And similarly, what would be the uh, slope of x third evaluated at x equals a, right? That equals, well, plug in, that would be 
3 times x squared, lower by 1 degree, evaluate that a and a equals 2, so uh, what would that be? 3 times 2 squared is 4, right? I think it is. Uh, I'm not that I might be sloppy here, but I think it's correct. Yeah, equals 12. I have to check my work, but I think that's correct. But you get the point. Is Here you got D, and that's your slope. What are we doing? Well, lowering. So it's going to be x squared times 3, right? Your n. That came, the n was equal to 3. Evaluate it at um, a equals 2, and you got it. So, pretty simple. Uh, let's do one more thing now, and that is um, what if we want to evaluate something like this? All right, so here's our. And uh, y equals x to the n, and we got a, and we got b on our x-axis, 0, 0, uh, this would be b to the n, right? I think so, yeah. And this would be a to the n, right? If you got A, you have to ask yourself, remember, our world, everything starts at zero, but we want, we want now this area here, this wedge, and a lot of times in engineering, that's kind of what you want. Most problems come in this form. And so, ooh, we're in trouble. We can't do this. This is not doable, right? We can't do it. <laughs> so how are we going to do this? Well, fortunately, there's this property called additivity with area. And that is that this area here, this wedge, is really the area from 0 to B. Subtract the area from 0 to A, because area can add subtract. So we're using additivity property of area to get to this. So simply, what you have to do is you have to evaluate that B, get your answer, and then evaluate A and subtract that. You see how that works? You subtract this from this big thing, you get the leftover is here. That's called additivity. Pretty simple, huh? Okay. So we would, the notation for that, guess what? Is like this, our S, S. It's just an S, right? From A to B. That's, that's what we're using. That's a very common notation. Actually common in calculus. Okay, Wahlberger uses this. Right? I've seen in his videos, he uses S from A to B. <laughs> cool. So what does that mean? Well, that, that means we have to define it. Because it's by convention. We're saying it's the S. Oh, excuse me of uh, x to the n, right? That's, that's what the root is, x, you know, like x squared, x third, whatever. Well, that equals, um, that's the assigned area of uh, x to the n evaluated at b, right? And that's always from 0 to B, because our world, everything starts at 0. And minus, 
Well, the sine area of x to the n evaluated at a. See it? And let's. That's that. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's by convention, you know. Is there some math? You know, who says that it's b minus a? Why isn't it a minus b? Well, it's that's the way we decided. This is the rule that we're going to use. Now the question is, what if the b? You know, here's a and b. B is bigger than a, and you can see that. Okay, this will be a bigger value than this, right? You, you see it. Well, what if, what if you actually go this way from B to A? Can you do that as well? In other words, instead of going from A to B, you go from B to A. Perfectly legit. And that, this handles it, right? That's still S of X to the N. The top goes first. Whatever's on the top, evaluate at A minus S of X to the N. Evaluate at B. And you can see these will have the same magnitude, but the sign will flip. This will have a negative area. You, you, let's do an example of uh, x squared. y equals x squared. Alright. From 1 to 2, right? And here's 4, right? Okay. y equals x squared. Now we want this. Well, the integral from 1 to 2 of x squared, yeah, integral, no, 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 sine area, excuse me, that's a slip of the tongue, that's calculus talk, we don't have any calculus. <laughs> okay, the sine area whew, equals, oh, uh, well, it's, uh, that's x squared evaluated at 2 minus x squared evaluated at 1. Okay, that equals x to the 3, right? Raise it by 1 power. What about our k factor? What's the k factor for a second order equation? 2 plus 1. 1 third, right? Over 3. Right? Um, evaluate it at x equals 2, right? Minus x third over 3 evaluated at x equals 1. That equals 8 minus 1 over 3 equals 7 thirds. Positive. So all right, in our scheme, we're going from 1 to 2, and that turns out to be a positive number 7 thirds. Is that right? I think so, yeah. What if we said, evaluate this thing from 2 to 1 x squared? Well, let's see. That'll be evaluate x squared from 1, right, the top, minus the signed area of x squared evaluated from 2. That equals x third over 3 evaluated at 1 minus x third over 3 evaluated at 2. That equals 1 minus 8 over 3 equals negative Seven thirds. Look at that. We're getting negative area all of a sudden. Here, going from one to two, we got positive. Going from two to one, we got negative. That actually makes sense. That's why it's called signed area.
And this is essentially the notation that we use. And remember, in our world, everything starts at zero to some point. We just don't have anything else. That's so if you want to start from something to something else, you got to reference it back to zero. And that's our little world. And that's, that's the basic setup. That's our math notation. And I think we're, we're done. So, okay, remember, before there was calculus, there was... Quadrature. You got it.